and welcome back. Now that we've had a chance to look at some of the differences between most of the standard lights, we can now start to explore some of the parameters which go towards controlling them. But before we do so, if you have a look up here in the top left hand corner we have smooth and highlights plus HW. Left click on that section there and what we're doing is popping into the lighting and shadows and if you haven't got it checked just check enable hardware shading and that will enable you to some extent see the effect that our light is having within our scene okay well moving over to our general parameters we can see that we've got a spotlight selected I'm actually hidden the others and turned them off so here we are general parameters light type spot and we've got that switched on now here it's also got this ticked at the side of targeted if we didn't want to have this target controller we can actually uncheck that and it's removed so that means it's actually turning to a free spot and not a target spot well let's turn that back on now of course we could change the type of light simply by rolling down our fly out menu here we've got spot directional and omni we're gonna leave it with spot okay so now that we do have our spotlight here let's just take a look at some of these controls that we do have well obviously we've got the spotlight itself and we can move this around our scene anywhere we so desire over here over there up down left right anywhere we want we also have the target control select that and again we can move this in any direction that we like and we also have this section along here this blue line now if we select that we can then move the entire spotlight okay let's leave that there incidentally whilst this is selected you'll notice that here in our modify panels our options are no longer available to us and the same is effectively true when we look at the target or we have the target selected in order to have our modify panels visible what we have to do is make sure that it is the spotlight in this section here which is selected there we go now we have our options back okay well moving down we've got the shadows here and our default is the shadow map I'm gonna have a look at this a little bit later on but if we wanted to activate it then we simply check that box there and we could select whether we want shadow map area shadow or some of these other options here so we'll leave that for the time being what I'd like to do is open up intensity color and attenuation now we've seen here with the multiplier if we left click between these two spinners here we can actually increase or decrease the level of light which is emitted from the spotlight and of course we can also change the color of our light by left clicking on the swatch here and if we select a yellow say let's make it a little bit brighter and say OK now it is against the blue background of our plane here but if we do a quick render and as we can see here in the shiny sections the light is now yellow okay let's close that down and take that back to white let's say okay and let's close this back down moving down to the spotlight parameters now here we can see that we have our light cone and this is this section around here at the moment it's checked saying show cone 
and here we have two sections hotspot beam and fall off field and these relate to these two sections here this is the outer section which is the fall off field and the inner section is the hotspot beam and we can adjust these if we left click in between these two spinners here let's just increase this for a moment as you can see the beam becomes wider now you'll notice as I decrease this the fall off field has remained at the furthest extent that we went to whereas the hotspot the beam we're actually reducing that down and as we do so you should be able to notice between the hotspot section and the fall off field around here you see that the lighting is now diffused it's feathered so the closer these two are together the more crisp is this edge around here now we've got it circular at the moment this cone but we could change it to a rectangular shape there we are and again we could increase or decrease the distance between the hotspot and the fall off field and we can also adjust the aspect ratio here we've got it at 1.48 we could increase or decrease that aspect ratio there again being able to adjust our fall off field and our hotspot beam so we can get quite a combination of different effects there now up here we have a section called overshoot which is unchecked at the moment okay well what I want to do is a quick render before I check this section here so up we go do a render and here we can see the effects of our rectangular spotlight okay close that down now I'm going to check the overshoot and let's now do another render well as we can see here in our render that the effect has been to illuminate all of our scene okay so let's close that down and turn off overshoot but you'll notice that it didn't actually show that effect in our scene within the viewport so if you ever get this situation whereby your scene is totally illuminated but you can't fathom out why just come over here and check that this isn't checked however the overshoot does have its uses now let's just pop back up here for a moment and what I'm going to do is actually change the type of light before I do so one of the attributes of the spotlight is the fact that well the light dissipates as it becomes further away here we can see the light is fairly strong and as it moves across it dissipates now if we were to change the type of light let's say to a directional we've attained most of the parameters of the previous spotlight let's just pop down to our directional parameters now we can still adjust our hotspot beam and our field and now what you see is the light is evenly distributed throughout the area here now if we do a quick render and the hot key for a quick render is shift and Q here we can see that the light is evenly distributed within this area but if that's not the effect that you wanted then let's close this down pop in over to overshoot check that and it will illuminate all of the scene okay let's uncheck that pop back up and return this back to a spotlight and we'll make it circular increase the hotspot beam there we go well 
Now that we're acquainted with some of the control parameters for our lights, I'd like to actually leave this for a while because there's the subject of rendering engines which I'd like to begin exploring. Now, 3ds Max comes with two main rendering engines. The first is Scanline and it lets you do the basics in terms of calculating shadows, reflections, refractions and, well, things like that. Now the second engine we have at our immediate disposal is Mental Ray and we would use Mental Ray for high definition and realistic effects within our shadows, etc. So let's now take a look at how we can switch between our Scanline and Mental Ray rendering engines. Right, well, I'm going to start by popping up into our render setup. Left click on the icon there. And straight away, if I look at the top, we can see render setup. We're using the default Scanline renderer. Now, here in the common section, if we actually move down or scroll down here at the bottom we've got a section called assign renderer left click to open that now here we can see that we've got production material editor active shader well here we can see we've got default scanline renderer if we pop over to this little tab here left click on that now I do have a few additional ones but what we're looking for is the mental ray renderer. Click on that, say OK, and to all intents and purpose, well, nothing looks as though it's changed. However, we can see here that we now have the mental ray renderer, and it's also telling us the same here at the top render setup, mental ray renderer. And if we pop down to render straight away you can see that it's slightly different in the way it does begin to render okay that's completed and additionally we have access to this group of controls down here now these controls are only available with Mental Ray so it is a good indicator as to which rendering engine you're using. Okay, and as we can see the final render there does look quite a bit more detailed, more pristine. Now we can also switch our render engine if we pop up here to our render presets left click on that now here we can see that we've got 3ds max scanline no advanced lighting high so if I were to click on that it then presents me with this select preset categories default scanline renderer advanced lighting ray tracer yep we're gonna use all those so say load and if we have a look up here renderer setup default scanline renderer pop back down we can see here in our assigned renderer default scanline renderer and also you'll notice that our box here is now no longer available to us well, I'm going to switch this back to mental ray because I want to start showing you some of the parameters that we can use that will only work with mental ray so back into this tab here left click mental ray as you can see it comes up it's at the top there now so mental ray renderer select that and say OK and as you can see we now have access to our control panel down here once again now I don't know if anybody's noticed or not during these short tutorials but we don't have any shadows and that's because over here in shadows we didn't turn the shadows on okay so let's now click that and by default it's showing our shadow map so if we now do a quick render let's pop over here do a render now 
now we can start to see shadows developing. Now of course you will have noticed the length of time it was actually taking to actually render the image here and that's one of the drawbacks so you're looking at higher definition but longer rendering times. Okay well let's have a look at some of these other parameters here. Now ideally you should actually use the mental ray shadow map when working with mental ray so let's just select that one and do another render. Now, I don't know if you can actually see this, but I can definitely see that the quality here is of a higher standard. Now, what we've got to remember here is that this here is actually a shadow map, and it's made up of pixels. So, if I just come down here a little bit, and we pop into the mental ray shadow map, then we can see that our actual map, our map size, is comprised of 512 pixels by 512 pixels. Okay, so to get a feel of what we're on about here, let's just zero this one out, the sample range. Samples, we're going to take down to 1. Press return on that one. And I'm just going to do a quick render. Okay well I cut out quite a bit of the render time there but let's just have a look at this now we can actually see it's far more pixelated around the edge it's not as crisp it's not as clean. Now we can get a better feel for this if we actually reduce this even further so the default is 512 let's take that down to let's say 100 press return on that one and let's do another render and there we go an even better example so now we can see that the map size here at 100 pixels by 100, pi 100 pixels has a direct effect on the quality of our shadow map now with the shadow map the default starts at 512. Now if you want to increase the quality then when you increase the size of the shadow map you should always double it. So if I wanted to increase the quality instead of 512 I would increase this to 1024. So 1024 and let's do a render. And here we can see that it really is quite clean now. But if we wanted to soften this edge then this is where the sample range comes in. Now with this, believe you or me, um, a little bit goes a long long way and I actually find uh, when I put this in it's generally about 0 0.001 but let's just try it at 0 0.01 again we're going to keep the samples at 1 for the time being but let's press return and do another render there we go as I say a little bit goes a long long way I generally keep it at 0 0.001 now I don't know if you can see this but it's well fairly noisy around these edges here so let me just move in a little bit closer here so that we can see shift Q to do a render there we go hopefully that's better for you to see yes around here around that part these sections here it's still a little bit noisy and this is where samples come in we've set it down to one but let's put that up to something I don't know maybe 7. Press return 
and let's do another render I'll just pull this up there render there we go a lot less noisier that may be better if it was round about 14 but I think you get the gist okay now one thing to remember is if you're gonna be increasing the map size and if we were to increase this again it would be 2048 so if you're gonna increase the map size and the sample size then don't forget it's gonna take quite a bit of time rendering okay well the advantage of actually using mental ray comes with this section here transparent shadows now what I've got here is a torus knot and I've made it translucent so therefore what we should be able to do is have transparent shadows so if we turn this on and actually I think I'm just gonna pop up to intensity and color I'm gonna whack that up a little bit more there so we can see this better then we pop back down where are we there we are let's turn this back down to 512 and make our samples I'll say one again and I'm just gonna zero this out as well okay now if we do a render and as we can see we're beginning to get that shadow which looks as though it's produced by a translucent body now if this shadow here wasn't actually meeting up with our piece of geometry here you can rectify that by adjusting this merge distance section okay well I think we'll call that it for this session it's been quite a lengthy one and I'll catch you later